We're gonna, we're gonna make some funky choices. This I will need opinions and help on because I think I kind of screwed it up a little bit. Clearly a lot has happened in the house. A lot has happened. But the difference with us is the radiant flame that we grew. You can see it through the atmosphere. But I'm right through the night. Hi friends, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. Clearly a lot has changed. It's gonna be a fun day for a lot of reasons. First, we have a haul. We have a fall haul. Fall is almost finally here. I'm getting to work with Abercrombie on today's video. Actually, this is Abercrombie. Wow, that wasn't planned. I just love them so much. So I'm excited to try on some fall pieces with you. And clearly a lot has happened in the house. And I'm pretty bummed because I vlogged a whole day yesterday with my parents. And I did not realize that when we were filming my dress try on vlog, a setting was changed on my camera and there's no audio. There's no audio from most of my dress vlog and there's no audio from everything we filmed yesterday. And so I'm gonna catch you up on everything we did. I'll show you all the footage and I'll just film a voiceover for it, but I have a lot to catch you up on because we did a lot yesterday. Mom and dad left for the airport this morning, so I'm sorry that all the cute audio clips with them are gone. It makes me sad. But anyways, I'll catch you up on a lot. I'm just getting ready for the day and then we'll, We'll start it off by trying on some fun clothes. I'm really excited. Okay, okay. And I don't know if you've seen the YouTube shop thing. I've used it only a couple times before, but I'm gonna link all these pieces through YouTube shop. And so you'll actually be able to see like the photos of these things on the side of the video and click on that and it will take you straight to it. It's way handier than just links in the description, in my opinion, because you actually know what you're clicking on instead of having to read through it. So I'm gonna link all these things. But this is the first outfit that I got. Y'all know I love anything nautical. And this striped sweater gives such nautical vibes. Like this is all of my New England dreams coming true. This is such a plush, soft, chunky knit. Like it feels like some of my favorite blankets at home, but like a lightweight version of them. Love the little mock neck. It's called the Tuckable Easy Turtleneck and it's great because it is just so easily tuckable. Here's what it looks like down. Also so cute with like shorts at the beach if you are having a coastal fall like me. And then these jeans, I swear by these jeans for my pear-shaped girls, I've talked about these so many times, there's no waist gap at all. These are the 90s straight jean and curve love. Um, and I get them in long, I'll show you the full length of these, but these are the only jeans nowadays that are long enough and that the waist doesn't have any sort of gap that I can find. So I seriously have these in so many washes now, but now I got them in this wash as well. And they make your butt look really good. Something that will always have my heart is when there's like a tank cardigan set. These come together. These are merino wool blend as well too. And so they're so comfy, but something about it just looks so chic, like so, put together. And this is great for the fall days that aren't like cold, but just a little crisp because you still have some skin and it's a more lightweight kind of wool. Like if I pull it, you can even see how lightweight it is. So this is great for Texas especially. And it comes in a few colors. It was hard to choose, but this one's very cute. Okay, y'all know how much I love my square necks. This one is so cute. This is the Ottoman long sleeve square neck top and it's a top but it's like very stretchy, elastic-y, so it just hugs your body really well and you could tuck it into pants and have a bodysuit vibe if you'd like. I care a lot about the way things feel. I'm like a very sensory person. I care about smells and sounds and feels. Like, I'm hyper aware of it all. And these last few things feel just so nice on your skin. Like, I feel like I'm being hooked. So that is something that I really, really like about it. These are parachute utility pants. Do you see these fun pockets on the side? I ended up getting these in extra small because when there's parachute, there's a little extra room in the hip. And I got them in long as well. And they totally fit because you can cinch them around the waist. I think I could be between a small and extra small. So I feel like you could totally wear these with heels and wear them out at night. And it's just a very fun look. So these could be dressed up or down very easily. Guys, this outfit combo is everything. Okay, two things. First, this is the bodysuit. This is the pointel merino wool, yet again, bodysuit. And I have just like a tank underneath because it's sheer. You could make it a little edgy and wear a bralette underneath, but I 
adore this. It's yet again so soft. Merino wool just feels great. And I love the way the mock neck looks with the layered necklace and having like a more interesting neckline underneath. These are the Sloan tailored pants, but they come in Curve Love. So I got these in my size in Curve Love yet again and no gaping on the waist at all. It is so flattering. I feel like I need to send these links to my sister because she has a corporate job and she's looking for cute things that she can wear in like a corporate environment all the time. And I feel like this, I mean, I'm gonna wear this just out and about being a fall girly, but I feel like this is also so good for like office attire, this kind of combo. It really is such an honor to get to work with Abercrombie because before I ever had the chance, I would just pay for my own hauls and do Abercrombie hauls anyways, because I love them so much. So thank you, Abercrombie. I don't wanna take this off. We got house projects to do. I'll put back on my cute little Abercrombie little hoodie probably. Okay, so as mentioned, I'm gonna do my best to salvage as much footage as possible from yesterday. The main things we did are kind of set up the den space a little bit more and then switch out the kitchen lights. So let's just cue that up with a little voiceover. Ready, set, go. I decided that, you know, I don't need to wait for my parents to get back from breakfast. I can roll out this rug by myself. I can move the furniture. I've done it once before. So I cleared out the den and started moving things aside. And I'm excited to see how the orientation of the den looks with all the furniture flipped eventually. Because I think when the couch faces out the windows, you have more of a view and then there's still gonna be hopefully a walkway between the piano and the couch. So this rug I got during Labor Day sale. It's actually an indoor outdoor rug. I really like it. I was trying hard to find something light because the floors are so dark that I wanted to make sure to brighten it up a bit but I wanted to add texture and I wanted to add color. And so I liked, this has like kind of a sage green plaid kind of vibe to it. And I also wanted something that looked like Jordy. And if you guys know him, his vibe is very 70s. And I don't know why this has a 70s feel to me. I think it's probably because my grandparents had a similar rug and they had a lot of like 70s vibe furniture. So I kind of just associate that in my mind. This house is basically indoor outdoor. I mean, that whole wall of windows opens up. People will be going in and out from the pool to the kitchen to grab a drink. So I wanted to do something pretty durable, even though it was white. But then when my parents came home, they helped me kind of reorient the furniture because it kind of took a while to feel out where the couch felt right to still give enough of like a living room and maybe even be able to put another chair on the other side eventually but to still also have the walkway of where the piano is. And after a few attempts, we got the couch into a position that I felt pretty good with. I need to get a rug pad underneath this eventually. They were just back ordered, uh, at least from Wayfair, and I was like, I bet I can find a cheaper one anyways. So that's on my to-do list. And then we got the coffee table pulled over eventually. And then we decided that actually there is enough room for a little chair on the other side eventually. And I am so excited to put a swing here. I know I'm a big child, but I cannot wait to, do, to add that because I think it's fun seating that won't take up too much space, but you can kind of face inward or outward. And we threw Jordy's chair in the corner um, just to kind of visualize what it would look like if I bought a chair or brought, I don't know, my olive chairs at home feel a little too formal because they're kind of velvet, but I have a leather butterfly chair. Could be kind of cool, but it's not very comfortable. So we'll have to see, but there's plenty of walk space between the piano and the um, couch, which I liked. And I was talking about how I think covering the top of this eventually with like a stone would be really cool. Jordy has it open for recording purposes though. So that's kind of, and down the line, would love to add those pocket shelves here, which I talked about in the last vlog. And then it was time to tackle the lights. Okay, I have to say, these have been the most controversial lights on my Instagram, and to be frank, they bring me so much joy. What I decided that would be worth trying to do would be to see if we could cut off the cage from the existing lights, and Dad was able to do that with just a tiny little hacksaw and wear it as a, a hat. Anyways, um, because I like the four bulbs and the the lampshades I ended up choosing are pleated with four big pleats. So the bulbs kind of fit into the pleats perfectly and it's just a little more interesting and it saves me having to go out and buy anything. So we were actually able to totally 
reuse the existing lighting and just cut off that cage around it, which is fun. And also, before anybody asks, these bulbs are so, so, so low watt. They hardly produce any heat and they're a few inches away from the pleats of the fabric. So there's no fire hazard going on here. Um, it is very safe. Dad did a great job being our electrician. I'm so thankful for him because I was gonna just hire that out. But I love them. So we tried switching on the first one just to make sure that it actually worked. During daytime, I know that you can't see the amount of light it produces. Also, we have so much recess lighting that it doesn't really matter the amount of light it produces. But at nighttime, I came home later that night and I turned these on and it's such a beautiful warm glow and it kind of like makes the light hug onto the island, which I loved like that was a dream for me. So I love the light. It gives like candle light kind of feel um, and really just like holds it here. And so I think it's perfect. And then parents and I went to the beach and otherwise I'll catch you up on what you missed in real life with my vlog cam while I have the audio. And now I want to bring you up to speed on a furniture project. This I will need opinions and help on because I think I kind of screwed it up a little bit. The dream desk on Facebook Marketplace that I showed y'all, that girl ghosted me. It's okay, I expected it. But I found another really cool desk. It's huge, it has so much storage, it's mid-century. And I dreamed of stripping it to get it down to just like a raw wood and removing the wooden poles and replacing that with like a more dainty hardware. And I'm gonna show it to you guys because here's what happened. I ordered a electric sander and we ordered all the different types of grits of sandpaper all the way up to 80 grit, which is super coarse. And dad and I took it into the front yard and we started sanding it and we sanded and sanded and sanded and sanded and sanded and sanded and it's hardly looking any different. The varnish on it is so thick and I think the wood underneath is a more like redwood. So now we've just like completely sanded one corner of it and we're realizing it's probably not worth the effort to do the whole thing because it's not gonna look super different and because it's gonna take hours of sanding. We ended up giving up and trying to get it upstairs and it was such a struggle that a yard guy saw us struggling and he was like, can I please help you? And we were like, honestly, sure, that would be great. And he helped us get it upstairs and it was like an ordeal. So I think this thing is staying upstairs. So I don't think I have the option to take it back down outside and try sanding it again. I had ordered 40 grit sandpaper, but I don't think I'm gonna get this thing back outside. So I think whatever changes I make to it needs to be able to be done inside in my office. So keep that in mind and I'll show you where we're at. <laughs> Here she is. Honestly, I love her. I think that she is so beautiful. We found old things inside the drawers. Like, look at this. Mark Williams, Fullerton Music Co. It was owned by a musician, which is pretty cool. And there was like vintage stamps. There's some other things that we took out. We found like an old hand-drawn comic in here. Look at that old stamp. It's pretty cool. Anyways, this is the corner we just went to town on. And we literally sanded this with an electric sander for a long time. And as you can tell, it doesn't look that different from the rest of it. So it's not worth the effort. But now we've done this to one corner and not to the rest. So I think I at least need to get the top of this somewhat uniform. Sorry, the lighting's not great going this way, but these are technically removable. I took out the screws, but then someone also used wood glue. So we need to detach these because I do think putting like a dainty handle on this would really, really change it. But what I just need to do is save the top somehow. I'm thinking about trying the thing where you put either like the citrus, like orange gel that eats away at paint and varnish, or some people said oven cleaner. You put it on top and you saran wrap it and it kind of eats away at it and then you could scrape the top and at least making the top all consistent and I could refinish it or something. I don't know. I don't know if that's my best bet. I would love opinions. I don't think I want to paint. I think putting paint over wood feels like a sin if it's real wood. So any, any tips? are greatly appreciated if you've done that whole thing with the saran wrap and just scraped. And maybe if it works really well, I could try doing it on the rest of it as well, but I'm gonna have to do it all in this room. So nothing too messy. I don't think I have a ton of options, but maybe one of you has a really great idea. So that's the word on this. And eventually this, this is just temporary, this is gonna go. This desk is gonna go against this window 
and it's going to be both my desk and my vanity, which is really nice. Um, I haven't thought about what is going to go on this wall, if anything. This wall is going to be my glass and um, like wood cabinets that I have in my sitting room right now because that's going to be the background of a lot of my videos when I'm sitting talking at this desk. And then this wall, I've ordered a pull-out couch, but I'm really nervous that it's not going to fit through this door. I should have measured it, but it's custom and I'm getting really nervous about that. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Time will tell. That's where I'm at with the office space. So I'm excited to see y'all's opinions on that. It's actually raining this morning, but it stopped, which is really nice. And I wanted to pick a couple pieces of produce with y'all and try it because I think it would be really fun before I end out this vlog. The lemons on this lemon tree are getting huge. Like this one's not even ready yet and it's huge, but these are pink lemons. And look, they start striped, but I think that there's one that looks ready. And I'm just really curious to cut into it and see if a pink lemon is actually pink on the inside. Let's see if I can get it. So we'll test that and we'll see. It's feeling pretty firm. It might not be super ready, but it's one of the only yellow ones. So we'll see. Wait, this smells so good. The apple tree um, has so many apples on it. We already took a ton. Mom took a ton home. Katie took a ton. But I'm learning that September is apple season and that I think by the time I'm back next, they're going to be gone because I'm not going to be back till mid-October. So I think now's the time that we eat as many apples as we possibly can. They're like store size. Isn't that crazy? All right, let's cut into this lemon and see. I just washed both of these. Also, this is a side note. Um, the, the couple whose podcast Jordy and I were on, the husband works for this brand, Hexclad. And he was like, you should try some of our knives and pans and sent them to me. This knife is crazy. <gasps> it actually is pink. Have you guys ever, I thought pink lemons were fictional which is probably so silly of me, but like pink lemonade, I was like, ah, it's just food coloring. It actually does taste different than a normal lemon. Almost a little more floral. I can't wait to make real pink lemonade with pink lemons. And then our homegrown apple. Mm, free produce. Mm -mm. Crazy. Well guys, Jordy is on his way home from a gig. Um, this will probably be our life for a lot of the time that we're living here. You know, probably like four or five months out of the year where he'll fly on a Thursday, go play like a Friday, Saturday gig and fly back on a Sunday in time for us to go to evening church. And so it's kind of fun to get a glimpse into what that will look like for a handful of months out of the year while I'm here, but he's gonna be getting in probably about noon and we're gonna treat that point on like the sabbath that today was supposed to be before i realized that the vlog was a flop <laughs> but um you know just hang chill nap from noon to three and then three we're gonna go in because he's playing for the four and six p.m services so we're gonna go in and um he's gonna serve and i'm gonna hang and then go get dinner just a lovely little sabbath i'm gonna be starting a new vlog tomorrow probably and it's my last full day here before flying back to Texas. So I'm kind of batching in advance. Editor Tara, who we all know and love, is gonna be taking off a week, which means I get to take off a week. So kind of filming in advance to not miss too many uploads while we both take off a little bit of time. But look, I haven't changed out of this yet. I really just don't want to. There's a couple things that I need to do that I don't want to ruin it, so I should change. But thank you to Abercrombie for partnering with me on this video. I'll have all these things linked and all the timelines and all the things you need to know down below, along with any other good information like where to follow me and the timestamps and you know the drill. I try, I try hard in the description box, but I love y'all. I hope you have the best rest of your day and I will see you for me tomorrow. Maybe we go shopping a little bit. Go hit up some thrift stores. See what we can find. Next vlog will be fun. Let's see